this is Shell C from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you the art that I did for the hashtag Love Autumn Art event for the Creative Arts Collaboration. If you insert the hashtag Love Autumn Art into the search bar on YouTube, you'll come up with all types of art of all types of creators who are making what they feel is a representation of autumn. So do that and have fun. Here where I live in Tucson, Arizona, we don't have falling leaves. We don't have pumpkins out in the field. We don't have um, all the things that you associate image-wise with autumn. We have cactuses and rocky mountains and lots of rocky landscaping and things like that. It's beautiful, but it doesn't really change. We don't get cold. 60 degrees Fahrenheit probably is, you know, that's cold to us. Um, that's still shorts weather to other people. <laughs> um, but, I, but what does change here when it becomes autumn is the color of the light. It seems to get warmer, um, not as blue and bright as it was before. It gets a warmer glow over everything and it's a very subtle change I don't think most people even notice but it really does happen I'm not sure exactly why but I can guarantee that it does and so instead of using your classic fall images to portray autumn in my art today I'm just gonna use color I'm gonna show you how things warm up and how the color seems to change because of the light of the sun here in Arizona. I think that color is the most important thing when it comes to autumn. Um, I, I think that that shows the feeling of it way more than any of the images. So what I've done today, I have an 8 by 10 canvas panel. It's flat. It's not like a wrapped canvas, a gallery canvas, but it is canvas. And I made a quick, messy sketch of some different shapes that I see frequently around where I live, which is the tall, thin shapes of the saguaro cactuses. And um, if they're really old, they have arms coming off of them. The short, fat barrel cactuses, the connected ovals of the prickly pear cactus, and the spiky agave and of course in the background there the long thin spikiness of the octio which is my favorite cactus I don't know I'm sure if it's a cactus or a succulent but whatever it is it's my favorite and I have them in my yard and that's the reason that my my channel or my whatever is called paper octio studio so you'll see it come growing up in the background there and then I just have a pile of different colors of paper that I pulled out of my color boxes that are mostly warm tones um, because we're going for autumn here and I'm just gluing them on this is what I call paper painting it's a collage technique that I use to create a scene or an image using just little pieces of paper or in some cases big pieces of paper and instead of cutting them today, we, sometimes you see me cut them, today I'm tearing. I want a raggedy look to them. I want them to look more organic. So I'm tearing my shapes instead of using scissors to cut them. And I'm just building up my scene using these pieces of, of paper that I'm gluing down. The glue I'm using is the soft gel matte medium from Golden. It um, doesn't hold a peak as much as uh, the regular matte medium. This paper is from all different types of things. There are jelly prints, there's clean off paper from when I was jelly printing, there's pieces of paper that people sent me, there's um, painty baby wipes, there's painted packing paper. This one is the painted packing paper actually that I'm going to make the octio out of. See how it's it's tall and thin. It doesn't have any branches. It just starts at the bottom and shoots straight up and has multiple sticks <laughs> basically. 
and uh, it gets flowers in the spring and then it completely is completely just branches in the winter there's nothing on it but in the meantime it has little um, leaves all up and down the stick it's it's a really interesting plant I really like it <laughs> of course because I named my studio after it but I'm just I'm in the zone here I uh, this is what I love to do I love to create my scene with little pieces of paper I just think it's the most fun thing to do <laughs> I don't know why I just do like it I my fingers get all all gluey and I have to peel the glue off my fingers but that's the only downside to this it's a lot of fun so basically you're getting shapes you're getting tall thin shapes you're getting short fat shapes um, and you know a little bit of variance in different colors that you might see when the sun's about to go down or the sun's about to come up in the autumn so I'm gonna let you watch me do this for a while I think I'm gonna speed it up here soon to make it a little bit faster because the process of creating the collage on this piece which is an 8x10 took me about an hour 30 minutes just for the painting part I mean the not the painting the gluing part so I'm gonna turn on some music and you can watch it or you can fast forward it if you want whichever thing you want to do <music> So did you guys enjoy that music? That was a little weird. <laughs> Especially with that wee-er part in the background. But anyway, um, some of you might wonder how I'm picking the papers. And really, it's intuitive. I'm not thinking about it that much. I did pick out the, the set of colors of, you know, that I wanted to use. I did pick out the warmer colors and, um, I didn't pay much attention to the weight of the paper I just you know some of its deli paper it's very lightweight there is one piece in there that I wished I had more of it's that grayish piece that I'm making the agave in the front that spiky looking thing in the front I think that that is something that someone sent me that they created using citrusol cleaner on National Geographic magazine pages and I wished I had some more of that and I'm gonna try to find some citrus salt myself and some um, National Ge Geographic that's what people say is the best best magazine pages to use it I guess I 
would have to go to a thrift shop or a library sale or something to get that magazine but um really like that paper it's it's got random pattern on it so it doesn't look like anything it doesn't look like a picture anymore it just looks like grayish yellowish paper but I think I'm going to try to make some of that I'm gluing the pieces if they overlap around the edges but not really paying attention to making the pattern all the way around the edge like I normally do with the canvas I usually extend my my picture per se all the way around the edges when I do a larger you know a thick thicker canvas that's like an inch or two inches thick so some of the edges are a little bit white and that's okay because this is really going to probably have to be put in a frame and not just hung on the wall as it is because there's nothing on the back to hang it. <laughs> I bought a three pack of these thinking that they might be fun to use instead of the regular canvas wrap, wrapped canvases, gallery wrapped canvases and easier to mail if I was going to send them to someone which is really why I bought them. You guys might have noticed that we went over 3,000 here on the channel for subscribers, so I'm going to have to come up with a giveaway, so I was thinking these would be easier to mail than the regular thicker canvases. Easier as in less expensive, <laughs> because those are kind of expensive to mail. So I'm just about done with my collage. I did cut a tiny bit out because it was getting repetitive, and I'm just finishing up here with my last few little bits and moving on to the next step. I like that um, purple piece down there at the bottom. That was kind of an afterthought, but you know I like purple and I think that stands out very nicely right there in the middle with a little bit of the red and copper prickly pear idea over the top of it. I do have some uh, metallic papers there, but it since I'm putting matte medium over them, it's not really going to show as metallic. It just happened to be some that I cleaned off uh, copper paint onto. So now the next step is to add some shadows and highlights. And I'm going to do that using first my pit pins, kind of a charcoal gray brown color. Um, these are India ink. So once it's dry, it's permanent, but I do have a few seconds to blend it with my finger because this is a sealed surface now. I've put all that matte medium over it, so it's no longer porous at all. It's got glue all over it. So I can take those few seconds to blend my lines in with my finger. And since this is sped up, you can't really see me doing that. You just see I'm drawing and then blending, drawing and then blending. It's just faster than it normally would be. This is speeded up to four times fast. I know that some creators on YouTube do make actual time videos, but I can't watch them myself. I get too uh, impatient, so that's the reason that I don't make them myself, because I figure people just want to see it getting done. They don't want to necessarily see every little nuance of every single spot that I drew on because that's how I am but I'm sure there's some of you out there that wish that I would do two and three hour videos I suppose <laughs> there are definitely people doing that you can find them <laughs> I just I can't even watch them it's terrible I'm so impatient <laughs> like get to the next step I can't stand it so then I push the bar forward and I know that people do that on my videos too because my average view time is around 8 to 10 minutes and my videos are usually around 20 minutes so that means that people are fast forwarding pushing the bar forward or putting it at two times fast so I know I'm not the only impatient person out there so as I'm putting on these lines I'm mostly putting the shadow on the right side as if the light was coming from the left side. Um, that's something to think about when you're doing shadows and highlights. However, that's not a, a hard and fast rule. I am putting a few of the lines on the other sides as well. Like if, if it's down below or if 
I want that piece to stand out more from the background. This, this has two effects. It has the effect of adding more detail, but it also has the effect of blending all the gluey paper in to the background, so it all looks cohesive. So it, it both blends in and makes it stand out, which is, seems seems strange that it does it has two opposite effects, but it does actually. Believe me, it does. <laughs> I'm also adding in some lines into the cactuses where there would be um, cactuses have lines through them, generally vertical lines coming down where they go in and come out. You know, there's sunken parts. Then I didn't like how white some of these tearing spots were, and so I tried to blend them a little bit, but then I decided to take care of that at the end instead. So the next thing I'm going to do is add highlights, and that's using my white fine tip Posca pen. This is a acrylic paint pen, which I love. I want to marry it. That's how much I love it. <laughs> and I'm I'm not making whole lines. I'm not making like a l big line drawn around something. I'm just making real sketchy, s you know, little little broken lines and spots and dashes and things like that, trying to indicate where the sun would be shining on the spines of cactuses. And trust me, almost every single plant, even if it's a flowering plant that we have here, has spines. So they're nice to look at but don't touch them. You will be sorry if you do. <laughs> Even the flowering plants, they underneath they've got spines and I, I think it's because this is a harsh environment and um, the animals that live here eat the plants and so the plants protect themselves by having spines. Everything here does. I have these beautiful blooming bushes that we call Mexican Bird of Paradise. I'm not sure what their actual name is. And they just seem like flowers. They seem like blooming flowers, but I was um, cutting them back the other day because one, the ones by the pool had gotten way too huge. Those things have little spines all over them. They got all in my hand. And so I'd forgotten to wear, I usually wear leather, leather, thick leather gloves when I'm trimming back things. but. I just, you know, was going to cut off a few of the branches that were hanging over the pool. Yeah. Even the flowers. Even the flowers. So in some cases I'm putting little lines, in some cases I'm putting dashes, and in some place cases I'm putting dots. And it just varies on how, what I feel like doing on that particular one. You probably wouldn't see this many different cactuses all clumped together like this. This is a artist rendering of what it looks like, not necessarily what it actually looks like. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> this was a fun project. I hope that you guys do use the hashtag to find all the fun autumn art that there is out there this week. So my last step is I'm going to make a glaze. That is um, Liquitex gloss and var gloss medium and varnish. And I'm adding a little bit of raw sienna color to it because I'm wanting to make a, a golden cast over everything. That white Posca is very white and I want it to have a little bit, I want to tone it down a little bit and just make everything have that golden glow that it has in the fall. So, it all and this is also sealing everything and make sure everything is sealed and glued down so it will be protected in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>